Don't worry, I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not gonna try to sell you any property in Edmonton, but I am a mortgage broker here and I'm gonna talk to you today about a, to buy property in Edmonton and things you need to look out for if you are gonna be buying property in Edmonton. Right now, I know there's a ton of you that are moving from other provinces, other cities and flocking to Edmonton. There's a ton of good things happening here and I'm gonna go through some of those with you in this video. I'm also gonna talk about price ranges, types of properties, everything you need to know about buying real estate in Edmonton. And I'm going to make it short and sweet so I don't waste your time. So number one. So right now, let's talk about Edmonton's real estate market. Right now, it's Edmonton is known to be a very balanced market, much like Calgary and some of the other Alberta uh, cities. However, we're transitioning a little bit right now into a bit of a seller's market. Now, a seller's market is when a lot of buyers are coming in, there's a little bit lower inventory, and the values of properties are going up. Now, Edmonton is still reasonably inexpensive to buy property in compared to other cities in Canada. So I encourage everyone to shop in Edmonton or Calgary, anywhere in Alberta for property because it, it's going up right now and it's going up at a pretty steady pace. Not too rapidly like it did in Vancouver and Toronto where people just can't buy property there anymore, but Edmonton is slowly going up. So let's talk about the types of properties that you can buy in Edmonton. So we've got almost every type of property here. We've got single family homes, of course, every city has it. And we've got the small ones, uh, as low as price ranges of about 150,000 Canadian dollars, all the way up to millions of dollars, you know, mansions with millions and millions of dollars. Now, that being said, uh, price ranges for high-end property is very low in Edmonton compared to other Canadian cities and uh, compared to the US. We've got apartment condos here. So you have one to three bedroom apartment condos available in the uh, city of Edmonton. We've got townhouses. Now townhouses can range in price all the way from $60,000 up to $450,000, depending on the type of property. Same with the apartment condos. They can go from $50,000, $60,000, all the way up to a million dollars, depending on what you get. A million dollars would be like penthouse or something like that. $50,000 would be a low-end one-bedroom or studio apartment uh, condo. But you can buy property that cheap in Edmonton, believe it or not. We've also got other property types, uh, like carriage homes. Uh, we've got multiplex uh, properties, so like duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, and anything above that. And then we also have the commercial buildings that are available in Edmonton. And the commercial space is also very inexpensive here compared to the rest of Canada. So Edmonton's got everything as far as property goes. Let's talk amenities. Is Edmonton a good place to live? Is it a bad place to live? Who knows? But the amenities make a huge difference on what is good in Edmonton. So first of all, we've got tons of gyms in Edmonton. Uh, we've got kickboxing gyms, yoga studios, uh, bar classes, uh, you name it we've got it here in Edmonton. And then we've got these huge gyms, luxury gyms and rec centers that have every, every sport, hockey, soccer, you name it, indoors. Obviously we're in a climate that we do spend a lot of time indoors. It gets cold in the winter time in Edmonton and uh, we need our indoor activities. So we've got all of that available in the health and wellness kind of section. Uh, Edmonton is really well known for its nightlife. We've got clubs, we've got tons of restaurants, bars, live bands, that type of thing going on in Edmonton. So there's always something to do in our downtown core as well as on uh, White Ave. So we've got kind of main party areas and that would be them. We've also got race tracks if you like to gamble. We've got casinos, you name it. As far as entertainment goes, Edmonton has it. Edmonton has beautiful, beautiful parks in our River Valley area. We've got miles and miles of trails going across uh, the River Valley. And we've got beautiful parks all over the place, like uh, like Horlack Park and Rundle Park, where there's golfing. We've got golf courses in Edmonton, uh, many of them. So yeah, there's there's no so there's no lack of entertainment 
or parks in Edmonton. Of course, we're known as the festival city. We've got tons of festivals that happen in Edmonton and people flock from all over the country to come and see the festivals here. Our summers are jam packed full of festivals. Edmonton has West Edmonton Mall. West Edmonton Mall is beautiful. It's the biggest mall in Canada and one of the biggest malls in the world. So the shopping here is fantastic. Edmonton has great schools. So we've got Edmonton Catholic School, public school, and then you go out to the suburbs, which are fantastic places for families to live. And we've got great school boards out there as well. Edmonton also has a very low crime rate compared to the national average. And I think that's another reason a lot of people like to come here and live. It's a relatively safe place to live. Edmonton has fantastic education. So if you have kids that are a little bit older in post-secondary or, or high school, that type of thing, we've got University of Alberta, which is a major, major university in Canada. People from all over the country come to the University of Alberta for their education. We've got Concordia College. We've got uh, Nate. Uh, we've got Grant McEwen. So we've got these uh, university colleges as well. And uh, so the education here is fantastic. There's tons of jobs in Edmonton. So whether you're working in, uh, in oil and gas or, or technology, whatever it might be, there's tons of jobs here. It is so easy to get a job in Edmonton and they pay higher than the national average. So housing is cheaper than the national average. Education is better. You make more money in Edmonton than national average, and it's cheaper to live here. So Edmonton is fantastic, fantastic for people to come into. Now let's talk rental properties. So it's really easy to get good tenants in Edmonton. So if you're planning on buying a rental property anywhere in the country, Edmonton has a plethora of tenants that are available and that want to rent property right now. We have very low cost real estate. So buying those rental properties, you want to make sure that you're going to be cash flow positive. Most of the scenarios I run for people are on properties that are cash flow positive. The uh, city of Edmonton is encouraging a lot of things right now. One of the things that they're encouraging is garage suites basement suites, that type of thing. So it's easy to get approval for those things. And that will also up the income that you can earn on a property. Another thing that they're encouraging is tearing down old properties on large lots and building multiplex properties on it. So it's easy to get permits for those multiplex properties in Edmonton. So to, as far as rental properties go, it is a great place to purchase a rental property. You will be cash flow positive. But Run it by me first and uh, with the property detail and that type of thing. So I can let you know if you're going to be cash flow positive or not. I did some other videos on that as well. So if you want to find out how to figure out if you're going to be cash flow positives, check out some of my other videos on the channel. If you're liking the video so, uh, so far, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps me create more content, but let's get back into it. So what do you look for when you're hiring somebody? for your real estate transaction. So you're gonna need a few different people for your real estate transaction. You're gonna need a mortgage broker if you wanna get the best rate. Walking into the bank, you'll never get the lowest rate. So what I do in the background is I shop around for rates for you at all of the banks. The banks give me a discount on the rates and then I bring that to you and I don't cost, I don't charge you anything to do it. So let me do the hard work for you, all the shopping around, and then I'll be able to come up with the best rate for you. The second thing that you're gonna need is a knowledgeable real estate agent. So that you're gonna wanna get somebody that knows and understands the property type you're choosing, knows and understands the area of Edmonton that you want to be in and not everyone does. So I know there's a lot of hot shots out there that uh, advertise everywhere and want to get anybody and everything. Please call me if you need a referral to a fantastic real estate agent in Edmonton. I'm a mortgage broker myself. I'm not a realtor. So call me if you need a referral to a real estate agent because I'll make sure you get somebody for your property type that you're looking for in the area that you're looking in. Edmonton also has all of the large real estate brokerages or most of the large real estate brokerages here. So as far as diversity in real estate, we've got a very diverse amount of properties. We've got a very diverse amount of professionals in the industry and companies that you can deal with. Your Remaxes, the XP Realties, the Maxwells, that type of thing. So 
how to buy real estate in Edmonton. Step one is obviously going to be to get your mortgage pre-approval done. I can help you with that. I'll make sure you get the lowest rate. The next step after that is to start shopping around on realtor.c for the types of properties that you are looking for. After that, I can refer you to a real estate agent that's going to uh, be able to find your properties within your guidelines. So specifically with what you want, I'll make sure that it's somebody that negotiates well, and you can do some research yourself and find uh, find a person yourself. Let me know if you have any questions about the agents that you are researching, because I might know something that you don't. Anyhow, so back to it. After you choose your real estate agent, then you get them to put you on a search. You choose properties in your search criteria that you like, that you want to see. And usually I'd say four or five properties per day is what you're going to want to go and look at until you find the property that you want. Have the real estate agents take you out, show them your pre-approval let letter from me and let them take you shopping. So you go shopping for your house, you pick your house, you write an offer on that property make your offer conditional on financing inspection normally condo documents if it's a condo and then you bring me the offer i submit the offer to whatever bank is giving us the best rates and terms and then we get you an approval after we get you the approval you get the inspection done on the property if you're happy with the property, then we close the transaction. I pass paperwork off to your lawyer and they get you to do your final signing. The last step of this is you take possession of your property and you move in, call the movers. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching and call me anytime.